Amen. I invite you to be seated. My name is Pastor Darren, and I'm delighted to welcome you here this evening that we might celebrate together this wonderful and holy occasion in which we remember that God sends God's love to us in Jesus. Uh, it is a wonderful night to be together, and we look forward to the hymns and to the candlelight and to the scriptures and the story and all the ways that we might experience God's beauty this night. So thank you for being here with us. We look forward to sharing this opportunity with you. Two housekeeping things before we uh, enter our time of worship all uh, in earnest. If you don't have a candle, please uh, make your way to the back, or when the time comes, wave a hand for an usher to bring you one so that you'll be ready for silent night. And the other is that there is an anthem, uh, the shepherd's carol, that we will not be hearing this evening. So when we get there in the bulletin, don't worry, uh, we won't be singing that one this evening. But friends, will you join me in prayer as we begin our time of worship? Loving and gracious God, we celebrate this night that after our waiting and into our darkness that you have come, we're grateful that you gather us together to hear this story and remember the ways that you send your love to us each and every day, but especially on this celebratory night. Help us to sense your presence, to know your goodness, to hear and sing your beauty, and to especially know this love and light of Christ that is in our midst. We pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. We give thanks for the light of hope, unrelenting and inexplicable. Hope is in Christ shines on. We give thanks for the light of peace, strong and unafraid. The peace of Christ lights our way. We give thanks for the light of joy, persistent and unpredictable. The joy of Christ brightens our lives. We give thanks for the light of love, warm and holy. The love of Christ comforts and convicts us. We light the Christ candle in celebration of God with us. Thank you, God, for sending your light in Jesus Christ. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. Thank 
The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and his name, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow constantly. There shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
a shoot shall come out from the stump of, Je of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. 
but she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come, to you, come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn.
In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was a light to all mankind. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you join me in prayer? Loving and almighty God on this night, as we celebrate and hear this story again, we pray that you would bring it to life in our own hearts, that you would inspire us, that you would comfort us, and that you would move us into the world in the way that you would have us go, that we may see this salvation even here. 
So open our ears to hear and our hearts to receive this word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Christmas Eve has been special to me for a long time. My sister and I were once the littlest ones singing in the choir, then the youth acolyting, and uh, eventually the young adults crowding the back row of the 11 o'clock service. As kids, we often got new outfits for the occasion, which was probably a big reason why we liked it so much. But our family uh, tradition early on was also to have dinner and open some presents at my grandmother's house, either before or after church that night. And perhaps it wasn't always, but I remember we would sometimes sing hymns and even read the story of Jesus' birth there in our living room, too. Every year we gather to hear this same story, this same promise, this same hope, this same journey to Bethlehem with no place to stay but with the animals, this same brave teenage mother, frightened but curious shepherds, a host of angels, and a baby born almost without notice, hidden in the least expected place, given the name Yeshua, God saves. And some years more than others, it can be hard to feel the spark of joy and hope within these ancient yet familiar words. Some years more than others, we might still be wondering with the shepherds how this tiny child would become the Savior, our Savior. And I'll be honest, this has felt like one of those years for me. Though our world may have seen harder times, even in recent history, there is so much suffering and pain all around us, so much longing and hope for salvation, too much violent destruction inflicted in the name of war, too much senseless killing and neglect tied to cultural identity, too much disparity holding captive those in poverty and economic oppression everywhere, too much distrust between neighbors and ideologically driven hate. All of this in addition to what we feel and suffer in these mortal bodies and yearning hearts. Which begs the question, doesn't it? Where is Jesus now in our story? How is this narrative of his birth and this gift that we celebrate this night saving us now? Typically, I like to lean into the metaphor John offers to us when this question creeps in. Jesus is light, dispelling the darkness of our suffering and our despair. Or sometimes I focus on his teachings and example that have laid the path for us to follow toward abundant and eternal life. But this year, somehow, the symbols and the words don't seem sufficient in and of themselves don't seem to capture quite the fullness of this gift God sent in Christ with us. There's a story I heard on the show The West Wing a long time ago that goes like this. This guy's walking down a street when he falls in a hole. The walls are too steep, he can't get out. A doctor passes by and the guy shouts up, hey you, can you help me out? The doctor writes a prescription, throws it down the hole and moves on. Then a priest comes along, and the guy shouts up, Father, I'm down in this hole, can you help me out? The priest writes out a prayer, throws it down in the hole, and moves on. Then a friend walks by, hey Joe, it's me, can you help me out? And the friend jumps in the hole. Our guy says, are you stupid? Now we're both down here. The friend says, yeah, but I've been down here before and I know the way out. This secular parable seems to mimic another one we may know, where someone has been beaten and robbed on the side of a dangerous road, and both a priest and a religious leader see him there, and rather than help, cross to the other side of the street to avoid him. Only a foreigner and cultural enemy of the man has compassion and changes his own course to help him out of pain. Both of the helpers, the saviors in these anecdotes, see someone in trouble or pain. And rather than move away, they move closer. Rather than shining a light on the circumstances or naming, even sharing a possible remedy, they change their course 
step into those circumstances with the one who is in need and offer of themselves by their presence to bring comfort and support and healing. It is really quite miraculous to believe in a God who forfeits all divine privilege, to enter into the darkness of our world to be with us. And not as some invulnerable ruler or leader flanked with armies or armed with controlling wealth, but to a poor, powerless family from the wrong part of town. Perhaps demonstrating that this gift was more about God's presence with us than what Jesus would do for us. More about how the world would be transformed by the ways we can be present to one another rather than by a social or political revolution. It's such a basic need of human existence to feel connected, to trust that when we're in need, we'll be cared for. We won't be left alone. As pastors, we learn the value of the ministry of presence, of bearing witness to pain with nothing else to offer but the willingness to be present to it, with the one enduring it, and serving as a reminder that God chooses to be there too. We know this not only by uh, this story of Jesus' birth, but by how he lived as well, how he confidently touched and healed those labeled unclean, suffering from illness, how he openly welcomed the outcast and rejected to commune with him and find community with his friends, how he lived in solidarity with those who were impoverished and ensured that the hungry who he encountered would be physically and spiritually fed. He even wept with those who grieved. In the wisdom of Ted Lasso, there is something worse out there than being sad, and that is being alone and being sad. There is something worse than enduring suffering or fear or grief, and that's enduring it alone. By sending Jesus, God confirmed God's ancient covenant to be with us, to guide us and uphold us and never abandon us, Confir confirming that God sees us in our pain and comes to our aid, sees our longing and desires to fill it, sees our fear and stands by us to face it, strengthening us to keep going through every dark valley or wilderness to see us to the other side. Perhaps you've experienced the gift of someone's comforting or healing presence in this particular way. Maybe as long ago as a child, when a parent stayed close after an injury, or when you were afraid of the dark. Maybe as an adolescent or young adult, when someone accompanied you to a new school or through a move to get settled in a new city. Maybe you've had a good friend that would listen with compassion to the heartbreak or painful decision weighing on your mind. Or a spouse or partner or child who maybe defiantly and or tenderly wouldn't leave your bedside without you. It may not be that any one of them was able to eradicate the darkness of those moments completely, but by just being there, the experience was certainly transformed. By feeling the presence of the other, there may have been hope for peace. I pray that God's saving act in Jesus of entering into our lives and lovingly drawing closer to us will remind us that we are not now, nor are we ever, alone. That nothing we face or journey through is too dark or too remote for God's light and presence to reach us. And I pray also that this gift and promise may encourage us too to choose to draw closer, not away from one another to remember that the darkness only dissipates when we get close enough to share our light, which was first given to us through the love of God in Christ. May it be so. Amen.
Dear Lord, on this holy night, we gather to celebrate the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ. As we come together, family and friends, our hearts are filled with joy and gratitude. We are thankful for the awesome gift of salvation and the love that you have shown us through Jesus. We perceive the wonderful presence with us and the everyday miracles of your work around us during this most wonderful time of year. Your light of hope helps us transcend our worries and inspires us to trust you. As we look at Christmas lights tonight, we remember the wonder of that Christmas when shepherds received the good news from your messengers. When we are outside this evening, we can look up at the stars and ponder the wondrous star of Bethlehem that guided people to you. We know that to live as Jesus showed us how to live, loving one another with unconditional love, would truly bring a piece of heaven on earth. Yet we confess that we often struggle to live out your call to, uh, to share an abundant life and unconditional love. But we come here, especially tonight, with the intention of making it so. Happy birthday, Jesus. Thank you for coming from heaven to earth to save the world. Thank you for being with us now through your Holy Spirit. As we prepare to sleep on this holy night, we trust you with all our concerns and ask for peace in return. May you inspire us through your dreams uh, of Christmas Eve. When we wake up tomorrow on Christmas morning, maybe, may we experience great joy. We pray for all who are cold, hungry, or alone tonight. Embrace with your tender care all who wander alone and have no place to lay their head, that they may experience the hope of this holy night. We pray for all who are anxious, depressed, or ill. Draw near to those who find the season a source of pain or grief, and to all who are experiencing violence, suffering, or sickness, and those we remember in our own hearts, that they may feel the comfort of this holy night. We pray for parents, families, and children. Strengthen families in the bonds of love and commitment that our homes might be places of joy and peace. We ask you that you bless us, your church, to be food for the hungry and hope for those who are lost and alone, a living testament of Christ's faithfulness to you. May all who drink of your one spirit receive new life to give to those in our world who are thirsty for meaning and belonging. Lord, help us stay true to our collective purpose at St. Mark's, to restore hope to those who struggle and despair through how we welcome, connect, serve, and love. Help us to empower this community by celebrating and encouraging individuals to use their gifts for God's purpose, growing our efforts as a faith community, and advocating for all persons oppressed and marginalized. In this moment of silence, Lord, we ask you to hear our individual prayers. Lord, please renew our faith as we recite the prayer Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we are those who receive this good news and get to celebrate this life in community and connection with one another. Uh, we are invited to offer of our resources and our gifts that others may come to uh, receive this good news as well, whether it be through our hands or the gifts that we give. And so this night we do uh, invite an offering uh, that might be used for the ministries of this church to continue in the year ahead, uh, to provide this space to hear the good word, 
to reach out through service opportunities and especially serving our community through CCSA and encouraging people to continue to have hope in the light and life of Jesus Christ. We thank you for your offerings this night. One tiny correction in the program, Catherine Durkin will be singing the alto solo tonight instead of Latifah Smith.
now the fun part. As we pass this light to one another and sing this uh, familiar song, I hope that we might, uh, or I invite you to, uh, maybe even make a little uncomfortable eye contact with the person next to you. And remember that uh, this is not something that happens without us, but it happens between us and that God invites us to connect one to another, one light to another, one hand to another, that we might see the world transformed, and especially see this room aglow and get to have this wonderful memory together of sharing this light. One note, please don't tip your lit candle to drop wax on your neighbor. That is not a connective thing to do. So please uh, turn your unlit candle to receive the light. May we share in this time together.
as we go from this place, I pray that we may carry that joy with us at that decibel and volume, that we may sense God's presence with us in every moment, in every darkness, that we may trust in God to go with us, to care for us, to love us, so that we may share this love with others and see our world transformed. May we go this night in joy and peace. Amen. Thank you.